Welcome to the Council of Done With Your Shit, where we discuss all things fandom and all things funny. I am Jum Joan. And my name is Carson. And together, we are the Council of Done With Your Shit, like she just said. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Re repetition is key, people. Yeah. See how much cray could cray 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 See? Repetition. What? Okay, then. Yeah. Last I week, want a contest like that. Last week, we talked about The Hobbit and the gayness. This the week, Hobbit, an unexpected boner, as yes. we called it. This week, we are talking about something that recently came out called Cinderella. Technically, it hasn't recently come out, but the Where's it come from? the re reboot of the Disney classic, the live action Cinderella with hot people and so many attractive people and attractive um, Galadriel. I mean, Kate Blanchett. Yes, attractive people in attractive costumes. And Kate Blanchett, who stole the entire damn thing. Because she is the Lady of Light. Yes. My Nord Queen. Yes. I love that movie. It was it was that so good. That movie was indeed like extremely fantastic, and I would willingly spend my money to see it six more times. Oh in yeah, I, I'm gonna buy it on. Just Blu like I would watch Jupiter Ascending way more than I should. Jupiter Ascending is an entirely different episode. It is. But that's gonna be our next episode. That's, uh, we'll talk about that at another. That's gonna point. be on a different time. Jupiter Ascending, but today it's Cinderella. Cinderella, the good movie. The Ju actual amazingness. Of that this movie. is good amazingness. Yes. If that makes sense. Good um, amazingness. Yes. That should be our... You know, um, like cupcakes. Cupcakes are good amazingness. Yes. Cupcakes. Yes. Like cupcakes on the last bison. What the fuck are you doing, cat? Sorry. Again, with my cats being... Her cats are just doing some crazy ass ran shit. Random and, it's and like, weird. bitch, calm. Calm your kitty titties. You're male, so. Well, males, dude. Some... Yeah, males have. Okay, this uh, is we're getting weird biological out. question. Males have titties. Why do males have titties? They don't got no nippies for babies to feel. We're getting <laughs> really off topic here. Okay, we're talking about Cinderella. Cinderella. See, the prince has nippies too. The prince. Spoiler alert for so many things. We're gonna be discussing this movie, but even though you know every single person in the fucking world, okay, probably no, not everywhere in the world. The, I don't think Southeast Asianers know it. A lot of people know the original story of Cinderella. You know, mainly the white community. Yeah, mainly <laughs> know the white everything communities. Everything about Cinderella. Yeah, the, the slave girl that's enslaved by her stepmother and stepsisters. She find her fairy godmother gets her to go to the ball. She falls in love with the prince, loses a glass slipper. The prince finds her with the glass slipper, and they live happily ever after. You no, know, she yeah, she loses the glass slipper at the ball. She runs away. He finds a shoe, puts a shoe on everybody's foot to see if it fits, and fits no one except Manage, for Cinderella. Manages to find her Cinderella, then put the shoe on, and it fits. And they're like, oh, let's get married eventually. And so they marry, and then everything is happily ever after. Yeah, but and I mean that's basically that's the story. Essentially, of the plot line for Cinderella. The twenty fifth, the twenty fifteen movie, anyway. The twenty fifteen. 15 one though had a lot more expansion on Cinderella's character and a lot more expansion on some of the other minor characters like the um the duke the grand duke in the original 1950 you mean Eric Yes, Eric Selvig. We were both Marvel nerds and we'll talk about Marvel in another episode. But yes, Eric Selvig aka is, um, aka a bad dude, yes, bad guy. Stellan Skarsgård, the actor that plays the Grand Duke in the original 1950 uh, Disney movie because I know this because Disney is my forte. She is a Disner. Dis <laughs> I'm I'm a Disney. <laughs> You're a Disney. I am a Disney. Disney is my forte and in the original 1950 Cinderella the Grand Duke was mostly there for comic relief. He was the one that fought with the king to um he was the one that said, sire, this shoe may fit in many number of girls. He was the one that went out and tried the shoe on every girl in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't a complete asshole. No, in this... <laughs> in this movie... In this movie... He was. He was a complete asshole. He was, like, doing, like, he was just like, oh, there's no... He doesn't need to have this ball. I've already promised his the prince's hand to some other chick. And you're like, wow. And he's doing, he does some shady dealings with the with some, Kate like, Blanchett's character, the evil stepmother. This evil stepmother who was... Played by the beautiful lady of light herself, Kate Blanchett. Gladriel, I mean, Kate Blanchett. Kate, Kate Blanchett is beautiful. She stole the entire thing. Like you're supposed to be feeling emotions for Cinderella and the prince and yada yada yada. But I and you do. Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah, but of course you do. But Kate, Kate Blanchett, Blanchett, she steals every she's scene so she's in. Amazing. Like whenever it's she, like that. Why do you think they had her in all the Hobbit movies? It's and Lord of the Rings. Well, they're 
fucking Galadriel. Yeah, whenever you see her, whenever she walks in the in the scene in this movie, she you just her, all attention. Your eyes are drawn to, to her. her. I mean, not even I mean, her interests themselves. It's like the lighting, the outfit on her, her jewelry, her makeup. You're looking at. Her. Yeah, she has bright red hair in the movie, too. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. Like, you can't avoid the woman with bright red hair. I know, you can't avoid the gingers. Keely, you should have listened. Oh, Hobbit. Hobbit. Anyway, the, the, the great thing about Kate Blanchett in this movie is that she does that perfect evil... She's s- a perfect bitch. Yeah, she does that perfect evil stepmother smirk. You know that, you know that look that... And the voice, the condescending voice oh, yeah. that makes it sound like she cares, but she really it fucking doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, the look, like the voice and the look, like if you're, if you're trying to do this evil stepmother thing, take advice from Charlize Theron, who played the uh, evil queen in the Snow White and the Huntsman movie, which was a piece of shit movie, by the way. But she, um, it was actually pretty good. I thought it was okay, but Charlize Theron was the only good part about that movie. She did a... Plot-wise, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, but take a note from Charlize mm-hmm. Theron. She said, just hold your head up high, um, like, look like look regal and think murder. And <laughs> That's essentially her character. Yeah, that's basically how you get the evil stepmother slash evil queen is look regal and think murder, and you can perfect your evil stepmother smirk. You got your walk and your talk and your look. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of look, the costumes in this movie were amazing. They're beautiful and colorful, and even the colors symbolized so much about what was happening in the characters, uh, what was happening in the events. Yeah. I'm taking a theater class right now, so I'm obviously, like, super, like, into this right now. So I have to be paying attention to this stuff. Yeah, Cinderella's palette was mostly blues and that classic that, Cinderella yeah that came from the that also came from the original um 1950s uh movie she was had a the the dress officially is colored blue but a lot of people think it's white again we're freaking memes go back to 19 to 1950s Cinderella's dress blue or white oh my god it's like oh how <sighs> I don't care dresses. but officially the dress officially the dress is blue according to Disney uh, records in the Disney vault. The dress is blue. It's just a very light, like, sky blue. Like a periwinkle. Yes, like a periwinkle. And, um, the dress, like, her blues symbolize, like, she's... The main theme of the movie is have courage and be kind. And that's repeated over and over in the movie. Even the dying mother's advice was have courage, be kind. Yes. You know, treat people like... Nice! Golden rule, bitch. Follow the golden rule. I don't rule. know why I did the spot. Why did you do the... She Star just, Shrek she thing. just, Star Shrek? Star Shrek! Oh, she Star Shrek! <laughs> Somebody almost oh told me! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, she just did the I'm gonna say, I once pronounced Naruto, Naruti once, so <laughs> I'm not the smartest person around. Oh my gosh, we've got to talk about all these topics in different episodes. I'm sorry, spoilers. Yes, yeah, spoilers, whatever. For future episodes. Yeah, and but anyway. Anyway, yeah, blue. So the blue colors, typically blue represents either sadness or calm and collected. But and the lighter colors of blue are more the calm and the more collected yeah. and the more positive versions of blue, which Cinderella obviously wears. Yeah, she usually... In They're her, more innocent, sweet colors. Yeah, that, the ball gown the, the ball gown that she wears is absolutely beautiful. It's like a very stunning shade it's, of blue. It's royal blue, I think. I, I think it is, I think too. that's actually the term for it. It's royal blue. I think it was, too. Yeah, yeah, and apparently it had like 12 dressmakers and it took them like 800 hours to make it. And then I'll just take some... Oh my god. Somebody answered the phone for crying out. Sorry, my phone just rang. And I did not mean for that to happen. And it is, Answer it. I'm not. I'm not going to pause. Ans- no, I can't pause it. I can't pause it. Okay, I'm, answer it real I, quick. No, I'll just let I'll it. Just it I'll just let it go to voicemail and then talk to my mom later. Anyway, we were talking. Blues. And then she had a royal blue. And then it took people this sh- it's a shit ton of people and a shit ton of time to make this really... <laughs> Gorgeous dress. Apparently, it, awesome apparently dress. it had 12 layers. And it's only going to take, like, someone, like, a week. A week and, like, and $300 worth of Joanne fabric. Yeah, fabrics. a couple, like, 100 bucks worth of fabric. And they'll remake it for cosplay. <laughs> Cos- Just you wait. Cosplayers you are awesome. All the way over here. And the storyline was a little more developed, like I was saying, with the characters. Like, the instead of having Cinderella and the prince meet for the first time at the ball, mm-hmm. they meet up a little bit earlier before the ball in the forest in the forest yeah cinderella but and it's like it's one of those you know they fell in love at first sight kind of things that disney's known for but they didn't make it weird or creepy 
like they made it more like sweet and romantic than what you would want for a love at first sight kind of thing. Like he encounters her and it's not like, oh, she's hot. <laughs> no, he actually He's falls like, in love with her personality. It's her personality. It's her beauty really helps, but it's her wit and it's her, <sighs> just her personality. And it's all these things just about her that makes him attracted to her, not just her physical appearance. Yeah, she, she... And she, he doesn't even tell her who she is because she doesn't want him to want her to treat him differently. Yeah, he tells her she's an app- he's an apprentice. Which, you know, technically he is. Technically he's a is. prince to, you know, apprentice to the king. He really played on the words there. And she, she was just like, you lied to me. He was like, technically, I'm speaking the truth. And she's well, like, she lied back to him. She's like, sure, sure. But they weren't creep. It wasn't creepy lies. See, no dicks here. No Hans here. Oh, God, Hans. No, um... Now I'm like really sketch. Oh, I just fell in love with this homeless Arabian man. <laughs> I'm gonna marry him. I'm gonna him marry a homeless suit. Arabian man. And I'm gonna marry a homeless Arabian street rat. I know, right? And I was like, okay. Oh, right then, Jasmine. I'm Take- gonna have this uh, man kiss me awake from my sleep. And I'll marry and you. Marry him. Well, technically, Actually, they were they already did. betrothed. They met before too. What? When she? Oh, yeah, in the Once Upon a Dream montage. <laughs> Montage when they danced in the forest. Yeah, okay, but anyway. Anyway, back to Cinderella. And yeah, the prince and So the falling in love in first sight was a little bit more believable. Yeah. And more sweet and romantic than what you would want. It's what you would want. It's not something creepy like Ugh. Not like in the original movie. It's something you would want for your children. Yeah, in the original movie, the main reason for holding the ball was because the king wanted a freaking heir. He wanted he wanted he his, wanted his heir to have an heir. Yeah, he didn't he didn't even care who what what woman's uterus his son used. Just oh. just as long as there were babies popping out of that oven. In in this movie, it's a lot more like political minded. Political minded, which yeah. is nice for the adults forced to watch us. Yeah, forced to watch it. And they were they were talking about the main reason was they were the, they wanted the prince to marry a princess for the state of the kingdom because they they, they wanted an outside ties. Yeah, they said the kingdom itself was rather small and like un like funded from other places, and they that's what they wanted. That's what the Grand Duke and they the, wanted funds. Yeah, they, they wanted protection. They wanted the moolah. Money, money, money. Yeah, they wanted to marry him off, essentially. Ha- marry off one of the surrounding princesses. Yeah. Marry them off. Well, they, even had, they had a pretty diverse, like... Cast. Min- minor cast, too. Yeah, like the guy that played... Um, one of the more head security kind of yeah, guys. Yeah, he was a, head se- he was a, he he was was a black a big guy. black man. Big black guy. And he guy. was the one that you're just like, listen to this guy. I wish I found out his name. I can Google it. Please right now. Google it because I really yeah. like the him. Ac- the actor or he the was character? Funny too. Um, character. The char- I know the actor was in a movie called um, Ender's Game. That was um, a really good guy. Okay, but uh, anyway, if you know the name of that actor, the black guy. Yeah, <laughs> if you know, what he, we're, he's we're the only about. black guy with a British accent. Yeah, and then so. Um, oh, the character's name was Captain. Oh, it's and, just Captain. Yeah, and the actor. Well, anyway, and the actor's Captain. name was Nonzo as Anazi. He deserves a hug. Yes, he does. This. But he, um, he but, didn't put up with the Grand Duke shit. N- no, he the didn't. The Grand Duke was kind of a skeevy guy, and he was like, "Bitch, bitch, please, bitch, please." And, and I, I love the diversity in this. Because there was a pretty good diverse min- minority cast. Yeah, there was an Asian dude. They had kingdoms. Wait, where was, who was the I Asian saw an dude? Asian dude in the crowd. You, you in the saw ball. an Asian dude? I did. I well, hit you, and I, I was like, "There's an Asian." dude. I mean, if we're talking about diversity in Cinderella, look back to the 1997 one with Whitney Houston and Brandy. That one was entirely like diverse, like the king and queen. Is this the black Cinderella? Yeah, movie? the black Cinderella one. Okay, the, sorry, the, you the, just the gotta king, say that. The king and queen. Whoopi Goldberg was a black queen, and the king was a white man, and they had a Filipino son. Like that the, doesn't make much biological sense. Not much biological sense, but hey, it's diversity. Diversity. But um, considering like there was a royal ball, you had like African um, princesses. You had the the Spanish yeah. princess. Um, you had um, Asian. Obviously, you had someone that was Chinese because they said chrysanthemum, and that's big in China. Yeah, that's flower. Yeah, the the princess that the Grand Duke was trying to marry the was a Hispanic bride. Prince Kith. Prince Kit off to was a Hispanic bride, and she was actually really pretty. And actually, she was very beautiful. She and, had the little curls and everything. And she was actually it. fairly respectful. She wasn't like one of those evil like like bitches. Like spreads her thighs like super easy. You know, she seemed like she was a pretty refined. Yeah, she well, was. She was a princess. princess. Yeah, and she didn't seem like a whore princess. At some yeah. Easy. Like the stepsisters. Oh my god, the stepsisters. The they, stepsisters were perfect. They were perfect comedy relief. They were. They were. They, they were, were awful, obvious. but they weren't as awful as they. 
Yeah, they were obviously there for comedic comedic relief, but the, I love. They're stupid. Was the thing they were stupid. They were not that pretty, and they're fucking stupid. And I love their their ball gowns because their ball gowns were just really? just so disgusting outrageous. and outrageous. And it was hilarious, like to see them move around because they were just like. They were not graceful. And they couldn't sing or art. Oh my gosh. There yes, was, there's one can. scene in the movie where they're trying to show off their quote unquote talents. and uh, They're practicing or something. Yeah, Drizella was trying to sing and it sounded like. And play a, the piano. Yeah. And it was well, it like wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a piano, it was a harpsichord. harpsichord. Yeah, and she oh was, my god, I said it right. Jinx Yomi Soda. And she was trying to uh, sing and play the harpsichord. It sounded and, like someone was stepping on Lucifer. Lucifer was in the movie, Yeah, guys. Lucifer the cat. The and cat. Some, and some were the mice. The, and Gus Gus. Gus Gus the fat, the fat one. mice. The fat, the, thank God for Gus Gus because he was the one that. that opened the window. Opened the window to let the. the captain and the, the Grand Duke and hear that Cinderella's Cinderella was singing. Is there anyone else in this tower? No, 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 no. No, shut the fuck up, Galadriel. Yes, there is. Kate he was Blanchett. like, well, I think there is. And then the big reveal. What? Which one? When it's just like, is there someone in this tower? Oh, it's like, yeah. I would think we check again. And then, bam! Oh, my on God. On the horse, in the crowd of the soldiers, it's the, the prince the, disguised as one of the um the, the That was soldiers. so swaggy. That I did not see coming. I did neither. I, I was, like, smacking her in the theater. I was like, Joan, Joan! Oh, my God. I... It was... Sorry, the cat was making sounds. It scared me for a second. I was but like, it was so swaggy conscious. just to see him but show up. But he was swaggy because they like they actually they did have a chemistry together. Yeah, you could obviously you the could characters and the, the actors they did a good job with casting on this movie. Yeah, I loved it. Kate Blanchett was in it. So. Yes, and the oh, and my god, and the fairy godmother scene that was yes, that, the fairy godmother so, was no, perfectly comedic. Nothing, nothing says I'm gonna help you more than Tim Burton's ex wife. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, Helena Bonham Carter was so funny. She was, like, apparently she improvised most of her dialogue. Well, like, she did a pretty damn good job. Yeah, because she wanted to play it off as, like, she had never done any of this before. Like, she was... Oh, she's new to this whole godmother business? Yeah, so she was, like, ditzy and, like, Ooh. I don't know what to do. Should, should I just... Is this supposed to happen? Do you think this is supposed to happen? Uh, yeah, she was a very ditzy, silly godmother. Not the, like, all-knowing, very kind grandmotherly. Yeah, the... She was a hot... She was... I'm kind of a... Dork, um, fairy godmother. I mean, I think you'd be good if you cosplayed that fairy godmother. You'd be like dorky and bibbity boppity boo. She did say bibbity boppity boo. I squealed when she said bibbity boppity When she said it, we we didn't hear it at first. And you know, we grew up. We watched all the little Disney princess movies because yeah. you know we're nineteen. Almost. I'm almost nineteen. I'm older than you. You're older than me, and I'm taller than you. You know what? I blame my great grandmother. Whatever. She's like shorter than me, but she's ninety. Yeah, now, but so. when she said bibbity bobbity boo, I squealed. We flipped our shit. I squealed. I was like, oh my god. I'm a goose. She said bibbity bobbity I can't drive. I'm a goose. Oh my god, the goose the was. The comedy was the, great. The, the goose go was in this movie the entire fucking time. Yeah, there was a running gag with this goose thing mm -hmm. where he was always in the way and always running away or getting trampled by stuff. And he ended up being the, the driver. The, the getaway driver. The getaway driver of the carriage. And he's like, I can't drive. I'm a goose. And the, the footmen were these lizards. They were, were lizards. They and were really creepy. They were kind of creepy, but they were kind of sweet. Yeah, they were. You know, they weren't like freaks. You know, they're just weird looking. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were lizards turned humans. humans. But they're, they were sweet and they were very nice and they treated Cinderella very well. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean Cinderella was... And she treated them very well. Cinderella too, treated... Cinderella. And at the very end, I think, when she was finally found by the prince, mm -hmm. she turned to the go the gr grandmother, the stepmother, and said, I forgive you for all of the bullshit that she put her Literally, through. like, making her a slave in her own household. Yeah, I'm, and that's taking the high road right there, like... She, seriously, she seriously took the high road. She was the bigger woman. And when Kate... I was honestly not expecting the stepmother to smash that glass slipper. Yep, she smashed the glass slipper. Yeah, Cinderella took the other glass slipper that she had and hit it. The one it. that wasn't lost. The one on that the wasn't staircase. lost on the staircase and hit it in her attic. And, and a little box of mementos, yeah. including a portrait of her mother. And played by freaking Peggy Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Hot mom. Yes, but she had. But then the stepmother somehow found the glass slipper and smashed it against the wall, and, and I, broke it. I like screamed in we the theater. We gasped. I was like, like oh! we did not. Expect Expect that. No, you evil bitch! And then she went to the Grand Duke lying and say, some servant girl found it. And I'm just like, bitch, that's your stepdaughter who technically should have this house. I know, it's actually, it was technically Cinderella's house. I know, like seriously, you're like the widow of her. Like your daughters aren't his daughters. Like she's the actual blood relative here. You're just his widow. 
I know, right? So, bitch. It's like Cinderella Story with Hilary Duff. Really good remake of Cinderella, by the way. Hmm. I loved it. I actually never really saw it. It's actually pretty good. It's really sad at some point, yeah. so... And but you know the girl who plays Paulette and um yeah yeah and Bell? I know That's she's her. the stepmother step and we're talking about glass slippers. The glass slippers made for this sh- movie actually were real glass slippers made by Swarovski Crystal Company. So thanks. They, yeah, they were they were actual props made Ooh, on set. Chips and dip. You can, I mean, we can get some after we finish up the podcast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Did you forget we were recording for a second? Yeah, I was thinking about spinach. Okay. And <laughs> and the glass slippers, like, Lily James, the actress that played Cinderella, couldn't wear the glass slippers because... Oh, yeah, like, her feet were too big. Oh, apparently she baby. has Apparently she has gigantic feet, Lily James. And so, like, she couldn't wear the actual glass slippers. But, like, when Richard Madden was, like, carrying them around... Richard Madden plays the prince, by the way. Mm-hmm. When he was carrying them around, like, apparently there were... The Swarovski crystal guys were in the background, like, in the back... <sighs> And, like, they had white gloves on and shit. They were, like, watching him going, like, oh, oh my god, please, whatever you do, don't drop that. Whatever you do, don't drop that, please. Because that shit's probably, like, 3000 a slipper. Yeah. Um, if not more. Yeah. And, I mean, the the one that Kate Blanchett smashed was probably, like, a prop. It, it was a dud. Like, it was probably that breakaway glass. Yeah, stuff. probably, like, breakaway glass. Because Swarovski Crystal is actually pretty hard. I would think it's so. It's actually pretty hardcore. Like, like I, I have a Swarovski Crystal necklace. And Damn. like if like if I threw that on the ground, it would probably not. bounce. I'm yeah, it probably kidding. it probably bounce. It wouldn't even wouldn't even crack. I'm gonna direct this real quick back to Kate Blanchett. Okay. If we were talking earlier about shut up, cat. I don't know. Cats are too cute. They're rag dolls. I love these bitches. Oh yes. You were talking about Kate Blanchett. Yes. She. We were talking about colors reflecting the developments throughout the movie of plot and character feel, internal feelings. See, Kate Blanchett. The evil, the stepmother, she goes from wearing, you know, black and yellows. But black and yellow, black, black and yellow. yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. I, you know what it is. Okay. <laughs> I only know that because of one reason, and it's Transformers. Yes. And so, progressively, the, the color she wears, it subtly progresses till she's wearing, just like, straight up green. And green is the color of jealousy and, and envy. envy. And sometimes it's even associated with illness. So that she's so jealous of Cinderella, of Ella, which is her actual her name. Her actual name's Ella, but... It's Ella, but they gave her Cinderella because she had cinders on her face. Because she had to sleep by the fireplace because it was so freezing in the attic. Mm-hmm. And they were so... She was so... She, you could tell, like, she's jealous of her. Of her beauty and her youth and her prime and her kindness and her courage and... How she's like, um, so she's, good. She's such a good person, and she's even just like, you suck. So quit your kitty cat noises. And she just is like, she's so sick with this jealousy inside of her that she's like awful. Yeah, and and so like, she's she, so she, awful. But she was so good at playing bad. She's so good at being bad. So good at being even, bad. Even, like, I was proud at Cinderella because she kind of called her out for a minute, too. She did? She was, yeah, remember she was like, I would never treat you like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she like, called her out. I I was cursing in the theater, but I had to remind myself that there were little children there. Were there were little children next to us, so I would hit her and I would be like, don't say bitch. There's children next to me. Oh, d- going slightly we're off topic here. We're gonna finish that one thing and right at the end we will tell them what happened right before we saw it. I, are we almost done with what are we're we, talking about? I'm done with what I wanted to say. You good with anything? everything you wanted to say? Yeah. I you just, ready for what happened before the movie even started yeah, this about is, the trailers? This is an interesting factoid. When we went to see it, nice knuckle pop. When yeah, we went to see it last night. Um, they played the trailers. They played the trailers, you know, as usual. Some, uh, it's they showed one, and it's a new movie with Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds selfless, and Ben Kingsley. And it was kind of it, off. It was kind of off. Like, it was kind of violent. And sexual. Sexual. And we're like, okay. okay this like, is a PG movie. The PG-13 movie trailers show up in PG PG movies all the time. And, and but then, then the, next, the next trailer. Owen Wilson's in uh, it. It was an Owen Wilson movie. Like, like oh, hi, you, Owen Wilson. You see Owen Wilson and his family. It's 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 supposed like to be all nice. Like the bird movie. Don't yeah, meow at me. It's like an all nice movie. And they're then they're moving they, to Malaysia. They go to Malaysia like for a family We're trip. We're going to move here. And then all of a sudden, 
civil unrest, gunfire, and blood in the streets. There's blood in the streets. People are dying. People are getting slaughtered in these streets. These parents are sitting next to me with their young children going to see Cinderella. They had to take them out of the theater during this preview. And, uh, people and, are dying. They're like escaping their homes because people are invading the homes and killing people. Yeah, in this trailer. And it was like so and bloody then, and gory. The, it's gory and it's violent. And we were sitting and there. And so we're sitting there and we're horrified silence. We don't know whether to laugh or like what's going yeah, on. Yeah, because we're, we're we're, we're 19 yeah, almost. We're so almost we're 19. adults. We're we can handle this sort of stuff, but like there's we're little seven year olds. There's little next kids. To me. There's like little kids in this theater. There and were, then the worst part is when I saw them had like they had to get them out. They were on the rooftop waiting for like help, and then a helicopter comes and everyone's waving like, oh, this helicopter will save us. And then it turns on the side, and then a gunman comes out and starts plowing these people down and then they're like hiding for cover and then that's when the people started to leave and then they the, and then it was like no escape and it was rated R, R. and they showed an R rated trailer at a PG and movie and we were thinking and we were like we were like stunned because I'm here with my buddy and my mom and her mom and us and mom were just like what is going on what the fuck and then oh they stopped it they and then stopped a it. trailer was gonna come on for the new peter pan peter movie, pan movie which is actually kid friendly which is kid friendly yeah oh, that's, no 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 it's well, actually not the original peter pan no, the, no. the original peter pan was dark, dark as fuck. And but anyway so they, then they stopped they it, stopped it and, and then a, a but, worker comes in and she's like okay they show the wrong trailers and it's just like Whoa. but the funny thing was <gasps> the funny thing was that trailers when they come out with movies are typically attached to the movie mm-hmm. they they don't like put in a different trailers for mm-hmm. different movies. So and so we were wondering what me, m- movie we were going to see. I know. Okay. What movie were they going to show? If if, they're showing people being sl- civil unrest and slaughtered in the streets of Malaysia and Southeast Asia. We were like... <gasps> What's one, happening in the movie that they were going to show us? I know. And then they, they tried to show us these happy little trailers afterwards like, get rid of the Malaysian Oh, death. here's um, the new one with Jim Parsons as a voice in and the here's alien the movie. New- and here's the one about the emotions. Mm. And here's a Frozen sequel mini sequel and it's, which was cute obviously we could talk Nothing's about that better than Kristoff sliding on his knees putting a birthday cake to Anna saying I, I love, love you baby. baby singing it by the way because he can sing oh he yes Jonathan Groff doesn't but yeah it was horrifying I, I was in shocked horrified laughing silence yeah. I didn't know if I could laugh I couldn't. Yeah, I was thanking the guy that took his kids out of the room. I was like, you did I know, we were just like, thing. yeah, great parenting. I was talking to the mother, and I'm just like, I'm an adult, and I, I'm horrified. Yeah, like, I mean, normally, if they if we were going to see, like, an R-rated movie, and they showed that as a trailer, I would be Would fine. be like, whatever. But I'm expecting a sweet little PG movie. I'm expecting a Disney Cinderella movie. And I want love at first sight. And I don't I want, want blood Kate everywhere. Blanchett. I do not want Malaysians being murdered <laughs> and <It's> like, <laughs> and there were there it wasn't just those kids there were like other kids in the there theater there was a lot of other children in the theater they were like of cinderella yeah they were like what maybe 10 and under yeah like there were a couple a couple more families with little little like kids. Uh, way less than tweens yeah like and tweens and, and younger they were showing these trailers and i was like i i was i was doing that like nervous laughter you know like <laughs> <laughs> is this supposed to be happening? It's like when you make a sex joke in front of your friend's parents and you don't know they're there. Oh, yeah. And you don't know how conservative they are. Mm-hmm. And it's just like... I think I've done that before in your front friends, of your parents. And your friend's like, yeah. And uh, I'm very conservative. Well, your family is anyway. My family and I are very conservative. I'm less, a little bit less conservative, but I still am. Yeah, so I think we should probably wrap this up. So we're going to wrap this up telling you the horrifying story of R-rated trailers in our Disney princess movie. But overall, the movie was really good. It was a sweet... I would watch it over and over again. I would buy it. Y'all should definitely go see it. I would buy it. I would cosplay it if you have the money to spare. Oh my god, yes. Um, Just, I... 10 million 10, highly recommend. Yeah, highly recommend. And so if y'all like this podcast, get ready for next week. We'll probably be talking about either more Hobbit stuff or Marvel stuff. We might might get into Marvel stuff next week. Or maybe you can hear us talk about these fucking cats. Because what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I I haven't... She's four ragdolls just meowing. I have a zoo in this house. And... Oh, he wiggled his butt. He's a pounce. Yes. Oh, he pounced! Yes. These cats are getting in a cat fight. You think you think girls? Nah, these bitches are boys. Yeah. 
So like if like this podcast if you enjoyed us nerding on out. On Twitter, we are ODU Songbird. ODU Songbird and, and Toilet Egbert. Toilet Egbert. Like us and follow us on Twitter and uh, subscribe to this podcast if you enjoyed it. And hopefully y'all will tune in next week and you will listen to us rant for half an hour about almost absolutely nothing. As long as we have a random topic, we as will... As long as the topic, it will slightly stay on it. It will slightly stay on as it. As I watch these cats like chase each other. Yes. It will possibly derail okay. and try to go off track, but we will generally bring it back to the center and hopefully keep talking about that one specific thing. And if we don't, feel free to smack us in the face over your comments. Please don't. Okay. Council adjourned. Meeting adjourned.